it is actually fairly easy to write a Next.js web application that gets just completely pwned. And I'm going to show you how and how to protect yourself. So we've got a default T3 app here. I'll even go over to the default page. I literally just ran create T3 app. This is the way a lot of people create their Next.js app. Um, I created a sub page called please sub. And all this does is it displays this message. And if we go and look at the code over here, it has a super secret key. Now the super secret key is just hard coded within the code itself. We're going to go through environment variables here in a bit. So if you're just screaming at me to use environment variables, yes, we are going to get to that. Um, so we've got our function and we are printing out the secret API key is, and then we're printing out the super secret key. Now, to those of you who aren't super familiar with Next.js, this might come as a surprise. You would expect, I am going to open up the terminal here and open up our console. And as you can see, there's nothing here. Nothing here at all. We can even reload the page and we're still going to see nothing in the console. If we run over here to our NPM output, we see what we would expect to see in the console on the front end. Next.js defaults to creating all of the components on the server side. So when we run console.log over here, it is by default running on the server side. Now this has inadvertently saved us here because we are printing out what is supposed to be a secret on the server side, it's not getting exposed to the client, AKA would be attacker. What we need to kind of do is change our frame of reference to thinking of the user as an attacker, not just a user. So this user really should not get access to this super secret key right here. Now, you might think, okay, I'm safe. Everything is being rendered out on the server side. This console.log is not going to kill me. Now let's just say you are sitting here and you would like to create some kind of state. So let's do let simple set simple equal to use states. We're gonna just call it a string and set it to an empty string. Now, we're going to get an error here. Let me pull that back up. Please, please sub. So I'm gonna pull this back up and we are getting an error. Now, why are we getting an error? We're getting use state is not defined. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and import it. To those of you who have written XJS code before, you know what's coming. Import use state from React. Okay, cool, we've imported it. Should be no problem, right? Uh, we're still getting a failure to compile. Now you can look over at the right and see a really nice error message that kind of explains it. We can also see it right here. Use state is not allowed in server components. Okay, fine, we'll create it as a client component. Next.js makes this really easy. All we have to do is use client, no errors, bada bing, bada boom. Now, What's happened? We look over here, we're not getting our output. We gasp. We have accidentally shown the attacker or our user the super secret API key. Now it's being rendered on the client side. This is not good. Now our API key has been leaked and we are in serious trouble. Okay, now we are going to fix this. Everything's going to be okay. Instead of dumping it in there, we are going to get rid of this and instead use an environment variable. Now environment variables are fairly simple. Environment variables are basically a way to hold strings on the client side or on the server side within the process itself. And there are a lot of protections that are built into environment variables that you don't get just hard coding things just straight into your code. Um, for example, putting it in a .env file, which is what actually instantiates it as a, a, an environment variable, that makes it a lot harder, not impossible, to push these API keys and different secrets into GitHub. My light has fallen. Well, that's borderline blinding. I'm going to have to keep my head right here. Um, I'm not going to stop recording them. Um, so let's do process.env. This is how we get access to our environment variables. And let's just do secret key. Can't remember what I actually called it. Let's go over to .env, super secret key. Please sub. Let's do 
super secret key. Now, what we would worry about is this still getting um, outputted over on the client side. So let's refresh. We need to restart our NPM server, NPM run dev, and refresh. And what we'll see is that we are running the console.log, but we are not getting our API key that's actually you know outputted. That's because our API key or our super secret key stays on the server side and doesn't get translated over to the client. This environment variable is only within the server side environment. It is not within the client side environment. Now there is a way to set client side environment variables. That's what you want to avoid. Environment variables, generally speaking, aside from public key infrastructure like Stripe, where you would pass a um, basically a, a public key into your clients that is used to sign messages and things like that. Aside from that, you should never be sending environment variables, generally speaking, over to the client itself. All of these should stay on the server side. So this is expected behavior. If we get rid of our use client here, which means we're going to have to get rid of our use state and that we will see that we'll get our output just fine over here. Secret API key is this should be secret. So we're, we have no problem printing it out on the server side. It's just not being sent over to the client. When the client runs that code, so if we put all of this back, if the client runs this code, it is reaching into its own environment, its own process.in, but that super secret key, and it's not able to find anything, so it's undefined. So using environment variables, generally speaking, is the way to go. If you're storing any kind of secret, any kind of API key, anything like that, that is the way to go. It is incredibly easy to do something like what we had shown in the beginning. It is incredibly easy to do something like this and just be coding away, not thinking about it. And then all of a sudden you introduce, okay, well, I need to be able to use state use state from react all of a sudden you know we're adding state we're adding a little bit of complication we're adding this and that and we've got to convert this over to a client component no problem you know that's not a big deal and now all of a sudden you are sending your api keys over to the client now all of a sudden you're owned it's it's, it's incredibly easy to do Picture this, but you've got a thousand lines, just really messy React code. That is a super easy thing to screw up on. So in general, when in doubt, when you're developing out projects, throw as much as humanly possible into environment variables. And generally speaking, you'll be a little bit safer. That's about it. Take it easy. Peace.